Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our presentation about um, our OPC VA companion specification. Um, during the next 20 minutes, I'm going to present you the um, actual status of the high pressure die casting companion specification initiative. First of all, I want to show you something um, about die casting because the most people are not fami familiar to to the die casting process or the die casting industry. Um, die casting is very similar to uh, plastics injection molding, um, but despite um, a plastic material, we are uh, using um, metallic materials like zinc, aluminum, or magnesium. As you can see, um, there is um, different um, process types, um, but I'm not going to deep into detail with this. Um, in general, we have a liquid metal which is being pressed with speed and pressure into a um, high pressure die casting um, die. And in this cavity, the material is solidifying and uh, then we get a high pressure die casting part. As you can see, there's different applications, um, automotive, um, consumer goods like um, toys, there's uh, kitchen appliances, or furniture industry um, and as well consumer goods, for example, like electronics and um, bath or um, consumer electronics, as you can see there. So basically you can say um, everybody on the planet somehow owes a part or a component with a high pressure die casting part inside of it. So what do we need to um, process high pressure die casting parts, we need um, high pressure die casting cell. Um, and the cell is consisting out of different sub devices. So we have different machines which are cooperating together to build up the part, to cast the part and um, do some post processing or for example, quality inspection inside of the cell. So you can see there's up to 38 different devices in general inside of such a high pressure die casting cell. And we try to um, formulate a companion specification on this scope. Um, so we are talking about um, not really the, the devices in detail, but the communication between the devices and this cell um, towards outside um, systems, for example, software systems or other components and other cells. In general, the cell is looking like this. We have today different field buses. Um, as you can see, there's different protocols being used inside of a high pressure die casting cell. There's a variety of uh, UI systems and um, it's very hard, for example, to get information here at the marking device if you want to print information onto a part from other parts of the high pressure die casting cells because there's um, yeah, automation islands, there's information islands. Um, you have to cross a lot of interfaces and, and boundaries here to get information um, between the um, systems. And this makes setup and using such cells very complex. Today we already have some standards to make automation a little bit easier. For example, we have the DISPO standard. Um, there are two variants. It's hardwired or it's a field bus based interface, um, but there's only uh, one using scope or one, um, one use case here for this interface. And this is basically automation, um, process data and um, other communication or information is not being processed with this interface. So therefore, this is a very, very simple approach. It's too minimalistic for the future. Um, so uh, we need a new standard. We need new interfaces for our high pressure die casting cells for the future. Another problem in today's cells is that because of the history, um, the most of the communication is connected or the most of the interfaces are connected to the high pressure die casting machine. Um, and additionally, we have um, different um, controller to controller communications um, in different um, yeah, islands of automation inside of the cell, but we don't have a central cell um, controller. And this makes um, changing the sequence inside of the cell or details of the automation very time consuming and, and expensive. And this is something 
we have to overcome. And um, we think that we can overcome these uh, problems with OPC UA. So our our goal of the future, um, and it means a big my, a change of mindset for our industry, that we have one communication channel, and this is OPC UA, and all the devices inside of our cell are communicating uh, via OPC UA. And maybe at the end, uh, we have only one UI um, helping um, the people work with the cell. Um, and that we have um, a very clear role of all the devices inside of the cell and um, establish a very good um, setup speed and um, automation uh, ability of the cell. So um, what is the approach or what, what was the, the most important approach of our um, companion specification uh, initiative? Um, one of the basic things we agreed on very early was that we clear the table. Um, so we have to start from the scratch and say, OK, old physical um, structures or physical communication structures and um, logical communication structures that, that are present in our cells today um, are not looked into. We start really from the scratch and um, start defining all the functions and um, the the interfaces um, again. Yeah, we have um, function oriented modeling approach. Um, so we try to uh, use skill based modeling for the automation. And with this, we think that we have a very simplified approach towards automation. Um, we can change sequencing very good. And because of the fact that we um, use a clear table to start with, um, we think that the complexity of the standardization process will be um, much easier. So what is now the new approach to organize the high pressure die casting cell? First of all, we have to define so-called combined devices. Um, in this case, we have two furnaces here. Um, those are dosing furnaces, so they basically have two functions. The first function is the furnace function. They are holding the um, liquid metal. And the second function is dosing, actually. So transporting the liquid metal from the tank, yeah, from um, the furnace system towards the shots, uh, shots chamber um, of the high pressure die casting machine. So these are physically combined um, devices uh, which are being used. And to make it even worse, um, there's different combinations here. Like you can see here in a high pressure die casting cell, sometimes these combined devices are already um, separated. So we have a robot system here with a ladle who is doing uh, realizing the dosing. On, on this side, we have a furnace system. But for this, um, we have to do um, standardization. And um, because of that, we said we have to divide those um, combined devices and, and look at the functions of the devices and define um, devices inside of our uh, standardization, logical devices according to these functions. So we have a furnace system and a dosing system in any case, even if we have a combined device. Or for example, we have a spraying system, which is the actual actuator, lubrication mixing system, and the lubrication delivery. With this, we think we can um, yeah, build up our standardization um, for our cells, very modular, like it is in real life. And we can um, we can simplify again the automation approach um, with this um, um, way of looking at the logical functions of the cell. Another very important part is to introduce tools and dies, since a lot of the devices inside of our uh, cell are using dies and are being um, um, set up for a specific process by mounting dies, and the dies are very important for the um, for the process and. Um, Actually, if we want to deliver detailed process information, we need information about tools and dies. And therefore, even if they are today um, passive devices without a control systems, we have um, the dies and tools of these um, single sub devices in our cell as um, a part of our standardization as well. 
So if if there's no controller at the moment at in at tools and um, some of the logical devices, how do we actually um, cope with the problem uh, that that we don't have a OPC UA server for this? Um, and that's our idea here. For example, if we again have this dosing furnace, um, the dosing system, the physical representation, um, has one PLC system, and this PLC system then is um, providing two server systems one for the furnace system and one for the dosing system. And if this system would have some kind of tool or die, it would provide the die information or tool information as well. Um, so today there's no need to add additional um, PLC systems or um, I I IOT systems. Um, we just deliver um, these servers from these logical devices, from the actual uh, physical devices that are present in our cells. The third step then is um, or was to separate the cell control from the high pressure die casting machine. As I said, there is this situation right now. We have a lot of connections towards the high pressure die casting machine. And if someone wants to change, for example, something of the automation up here, um, there has always to be um, a software update and software change here with the high pressure die casting machine, which doesn't make so much sense and it's time consuming. And um, that's not what um, a good future proof um, solution looks like for uh, an automated cell. And therefore, we define a cell controller. So it's a logical additional device which is controlling here the post processing and the main process of the high pressure die casting cell. We are using um, use case and component driven interface structure. So we defined some of the um, our major use cases. We have identification, manual and documentation, alarms and conditions. Um, for our customers, it's very important to configure and set up a cell um, as fast as possible. So we have configuration and settings in there. Everybody wants to have um, process um, information and wants to control the process. Um, of, a, of a production cell nowadays. So um, that's a very intensive area here with process and process control data. Automation is one of the parts of our um, standardization. And then we have maintenance service and condition monitoring, uh, which are very interesting um, features of the future. Um, with these use cases and our logical um, devices, this is the list of our standardization steps. So the first scope, we have the cell controller, the high pressure die casting machine, metal supply, lubrication systems, thermal regulation, vacuum systems, part separation, and cell logistics and processing. So that's this is basically the scope of our standardization process and the devices we are standardizing. And um, now I want to say something about our um, automation effort, um, automation um, technology. We want to use skill based modeling. And um, for us, a skill is an ability or a function of a device, of a system, of an object. For example, if we have here the dosing system, it has some skills. It can move this arm towards a specific. Uh, position, for example, to pick up metal here or dose the metal into the chamber of the high pressure die casting machine. So these abilities of the system are the skills of the system. And there are different types of skills. We have macroscopic skills like I've seen uh, show you before, and we have smaller skills, um, something like a micro skill, um, for example, um, moving an axis um, or something like this. Yeah. So we have the macro skills, for example, here for the high pressure die casting machine, opening and closing the die, but a micro skill for the same axis here to move to a specific um, position. We need this actually, since some of our automation um, efforts inside of the cell need micro skills as well, as, as well. not only um, bigger abilities, um, but smaller abilities to move, for example, a specific axis. So how do we automate a system then? We, we want to use something like sequences. So um, a sequence looks like this. The machine, for example, closes the die, then the dosing system doses metal, 
the high pressure die casting machine needs to perform the injection. And then after solidification, it opens the die again. And we call this list or this um, step by step um, of um, skills or micro skills, we call this a automation sequence. How do we want to um, realize with this with OPC OA? You see here the PLC structure of uh, three devices, high pressure die casting machine, dosing, furnace, and a spraying system. You see the cell controller, all those have client server systems and they are communicating to each other. And um, a sequence then is being made by um, a device skill call, and this is in um, on the technical level is an OPC UA model uh, method call, um, and this again calls the PLC method. Um, for example, um, if the cell controller says close the die, then he, it is calling um, with its client on the server of the high pressure die casting machine the close die um, function here of the machine. Micro skills look like this, for example, we have um, an axis here, we have different positions, and then a function call can look like this, um, move to um, a specific position, um, so for example, for the die closed position. And with this approach, it's very easy to keep um, the HMI systems that we have right now with all the parameters and stuff um, so um, that there's no big change actually in the use of the machine for the uh, for the operators, but um, we can use actually um, the complete skill system on the back of it. So why do we need um, these micro skills? I've said it before. There is sometimes micro management of specific actions action uh, access needed. For example, we have a spraying process where an axis of the high pressure die casting machine have to be moved. Yeah, so um, we call, for example, the the move to position of the machine to spraying position. Then the sprayer performs his actual spraying sequence, and then the machine moves to a position again to the initial position. And with this possibility to use skills and micro skills, we are able to really good automate or sell and a very flexible automate or cell um, with OPC OA. Okay, um, how does our standardization initiative look like? We have a technical core group which is doing um, a lot of definitions work. We have for the different devices or devices groups, um, working groups um, like you see here, um, we have a diecaster advisory board, which is bringing in the customer um, view into um, our standardization process. Um, we have um, these different device working groups, um, and they are aligned on the different um, device classes actually inside of our plant, as there's seven different um, groups here. Our companion specification will be made of multiple documents. So there will be a scope companion specification, which is actually defining which of the technical and device companion specifications belong to high pressure die casting. And the technical um, companion specification is defining rules and specifications for all devices that are under the umbrella of high pressure die casting. So uh, there will be one companion specification giving out the um, major regulations and different device specifications for all the different devices inside of our cell. Um, always referencing to the technical companion specification and the scope is wrapping up these companion specifications. This is the use cases that we want to address. Um, I showed you before. Now um, the last slide maybe um, towards the status or yeah, there's two last slides, um, to one towards the status of our companion specification. Um, we actually um, identified our stakeholders, the cases um, we are discussing right now, um, which information do we want to transport? Um, some information is already ready discussed, um, some others needs more um, discussion. Um, we have um, a lot of use cases already uh, being defined um, or already defined for automation. 
we are now at the state that we start to write the documents. So we are um, staff documents to the um, actual VDMA template and then start um, working on the realization. We already have a test bed. Um, so PLC and control systems are in, inside of this test bed and we can make actually um, an automation and um, yeah, OPC UA um, test um, for a high pressure die casting cell with this test bed. What's going to be the future? Um, we align to the OPC UA for machinery uh, standard. So the most of our use cases, as you can see here, the green ones are somehow related to OPC UA for machinery. So um, these use cases then will be following the OPC UA for machinery standardization. We'll, um, skill-based modeling and see if we align to IM group or SOARC and um, the other standardizations will be done um, here for maintenance service and condition monitoring and our main part is process and process control. So um, as I said, we advance the way that we add um, um, that our release is being based on OPC OA for machinery. We add the different parts of machinery to our um, component specifications and then release our own version of the high pressure die casting um, standard. So that was a short wrap up of our um, component specification. Thank you for your attention and I hope that you are well in the future and have um, a good day. Thank you.